Hi everybody, I'm Sonia and I just need to check if this is actually working. Is it working? <laughs> okay, I think it's working. Um, wait. Okay, so I'm just gonna go for it because I think it is working. Um, so this evening, um, I'm going to be talking to you about the four foundations of living your best epic life. But first of all, I want to say thank you so much to Mind, Body and Spirit, um, the festival, the oldest running festival of its kind. It started in the 70s and I will be teaching there this year, very soon on the 30th of April. I'll be doing my workshop and I'm very, very privileged to be a part of this amazing family. So thank you very much for inviting me to speak here tonight. Um, okay, so how did I come to talk about this topic? I've been teaching yoga for years, I'm a life coach, I speak, but this topic was something I really wanted to share with you. So when they asked me, and I was thinking about what I want to share with everybody, this is it. The four foundations to living your best epic life. So it was January, and I was sitting in a park in London, and by the way, I'm coming to you from London right now, so for people that are overseas, I'm in London, and this was in January, and it was a really, really arctically cold day. It was freezing. And I was bundled up sitting on a bench, watching my four-year-old daughter scoot her way around this obstacle park. And it was watching her that this topic came to me, because I was freezing with my thermals and my snow gear and really feeling it having come from Florida for Christmas, after Christmas. And there she was, totally oblivious to the climate change that we just had. She was scootering her way around this obstacle park, really, really focused on what she was doing. This other little scooter came and bashed her and he kept on doing it like a little Dennis the Menace. And she didn't care. She would just giggle in fits of laughter. And, and I was thinking to myself, you know, if I could depart some pearly wisdom, if I had just five minutes left on this good earth, and I needed to give her some wisdom about what I've learned makes a really good life. And her grandchildren, of course, because I think I've got some years yet. And I was thinking, you know, what wisdom, what words of wisdom could we give our children for them to live the best possible lives? What would you give your children? What advice, what wisdom, out of all the life that you've lived so far, could you sit down and go, baby, this is it. So I'm gonna give you just a few seconds to think about that, okay? Just think about what you would like to tell your kids or your future grandchildren. So I bet we've all come up with the same thing, right? So don't take things so seriously. Be light with life, laugh more. Um, follow your dreams, live your passion, um, you know, just, you know, even if you don't think you're a brilliant singer, just sing anyway and, and dance and, and live life to the full because this is your life, baby. That's what I would want to say to her. And that's what I'm sure we'd all want to say to our kids. And so this is my question. Are we living that great advice? Because that's some really great advice. Are we living it? Are we really living this be easy, be free, you know, dance even, you know, if you don't think you're good at it, just go for it anyway and live your passions, follow your dreams. Are we doing that? And the truth is, <laughs> I think a lot of the time we're not. Most of us are tired, you know, you come home, you're a little bit impatient, you're, you know, you're not kind all the time, you, you're not, that compassion leaves you because you're just so tired, and you're not living your dreams. And why not? Why can we give all this great advice? And why do we so badly want to give it? And we want our children, baby, just live this advice. And yet, why are we not taking our own good advice? And the key is the soil. It's the soil. Because 
you can take these beautiful quality seeds, compassion, I want to be kind, I want to be courageous, I want to go out there and, you know, tackle my dreams, I want to not I want to live without fear. I want to encourage the people around me to do the same. We can pick these seeds of wisdom and then we can scatter them over this lumpy soil. But dry, lumpy soil is not going to help our seeds grow and they're going to struggle if they live at all, right? So it's actually the soil is our health in this scenario. Our health, when we are healthy and we are well and we are vibrant and our body is just full of life and energy, we can scatter whatever seeds we want to sow on that soil and they will grow, they will flourish. And so what I wanted to share with you and with my future grandchildren is that you can do anything. And we're all different. We'll all want to do different things. Some of us will want to be archaeologists and some of us will want to be vets and, you know, doctors and actors. And, and it's all there for us. But the foundation of everything, every single thing, is the quality of our soil. And that is based on these four simple foundations. And it's not like this intricate, you know, labyrinth recipe. It's simple and it starts out with eat well. That's your first one. You've got to put good fuel into your body. You've got to nourish yourself with the stuff that nourishes you. And not all the same, we're not the same. So you've got to figure out in your life, do you work with dairy? Do you work with wheat? Is that going to work for you? And that's your, you've got to be your own, uh, Archaeologist, you've got to dig down and think, oh, did I get tired after I ate that wheat burrito? And go, no, no, it doesn't work for me. And then have the strength and the courage to follow what works for your beautiful bod. That's what you've got to do. The second foundation is sleep. So, you know, there's like obviously torture happens. If you can't sleep, your immune system will collapse and your heart will suffer and you will literally be. It, you will you can die okay basically and if you've ever if you're a mom out there and you know what that not sleeping over and over feels like I got you because it is a killer you got to try and get good sleep so try to sleep before midnight and try to wake up early so you go in the rhythm of the planet you wake up with the sunrise and so try to let that be how you do it I know it's difficult to get into bed but it's one of the four foundations Good sleep makes you a very happy being, okay? So, then we come to the mind. Meditate. We're constantly thinking, right? We just, oh, our minds are just so busy all the time. We're thinking, thinking, thinking. So we got to stop. we got to stop that. Even if it's once a day, even if it's just five minutes and just drop in. Drop into your body. Drop into what it feels like to be and not to be thinking. And I like to couple meditation with visualization because I believe that visualization is so powerful. It is one of the most powerful things you can do. I love visualization and I'm really big on it. So meditation and time for visualization, time to see what it is in your life that you want with your life so that you become the co-creator. And then there's exercise. Okay, so for me, that's going to be yoga. Yoga is a really, really big part of my life. And it has been as a teacher for over 12 years. But I've been practicing yoga since I was young, since I was 14. You know, I got my first TV commercial and there was no, there was no Google or anything in those days. And I went to my dad's bookshelf and my stepmom had this book by Raquel Welsh which I just became my Bible. And little did I know that Raquel Welsh's book was all Bikram Chowdhury's yoga. I had no idea. In fact, I had no idea until my mid twenties and I was in an ashram and you know, they said to me, Oh, you're so good. And I started talking about my physical life and I got into, so the whole, you know, 
Raquel Welsh in the book and and then I figured out and it was such an aha moment because I've been doing it for so long and it's something whether you call it yoga or daisy practice it is the most profound physical practice I like going to the gym I love walking I love swimming but the one thing I can't live without and that is moving my energy every single day and it's like uh, it's like this rinsing out of my physical body every single day I move the energy I connect I come home I drop in I check out what's going on in the skeleton in this house that is my greatest gift that is your greatest gift that is our collective greatest spiritual gift to be embodied right it's amazing and so the full foundations have to be really the essence the foundation and on top of that anything can happen so I would say to my daughter and my future grandchildren at the end of that all is baby start yoga just start yoga as soon as you can start studying your life and who you are this Sanskrit words but higher self-study is one of the tenets of the yoga sutras it is the wisdom that I think every single young person should know that you are your greatest journey and you have to figure out what works for you the same thing is not going to work we can't all work from the same textbook you know for me I became a vegan when I was 17 in a South African meat-eating family my father was traumatized by this whole chapter he kept on you know making food and hiding meat in stews and saying here we go chuckles you won't taste the meat he didn't actually get them maybe maybe I didn't want to eat meat you know and it's you just got to figure out what works for you some people love meat and that's okay and some people don't and that's okay live and let live and have the courage to do what you know works for you so you know this is a really big a big thing is discover what works for you we are not all the same we are so unique and I always think of Patabi Joyce who's like the god the grandfather or the godfather if you like of yoga and he said with yoga anything is possible and he didn't mean like you know get into a little pretzel shape and then you know you can take over the world what he meant was yoga is when the mind and the body come together and they yoke and your mind is in your body and your body is in your mind and in that moment it's like you get that spiritual sparkle and you're creative with your life you suddenly realize oh I want to do this and I want to do that and then when you've got the full foundations you've got all that energy to just put it together and do it so that's the message to my future grandchildren and I think you know my little Mika is gonna get that just she has already just start your yoga practice and don't wait for tomorrow when you feel better or when you've lost some weight or when you're away on that beautiful spa retreat I mean start it right now start it tonight reach up stretch feel into your physical body and come home and the rest will take care of itself so you know I I the practice that I teach the practice that I live the practice that I do every day of my life is called moving energy yoga and it's this beautiful weave of so many different schools of yoga it's pulsing and feeling into your physical body and I I really wanted to share that because I know that a lot of people they don't have time they're rushing home from work to get to a yoga studio or to wake up early in the morning and put their yoga gear on and I wanted them to know that you don't have to do that your yoga is like you your yoga and the open road and that's what it is you wake up in the morning and that's why I created total body yoga um, you know so you can put it on in your living room you can roll out your yoga mat and you can just do it in your pajamas I mean you don't need any special yoga clothes or any chanting or anything fancy you just need you and your mat and just to just learn discover the sequences and get into your body and there's something for everybody on that and actually um, 
I have a code for you guys because if any of you really want to start yoga like right now tonight which I recommend um, I wanted to share um, an mind body spirit festival promotion with you which is 20% off so please feel free to um, actually write to me it's MBS uh, 2017 um, you can go onto my website and you can just hook yourself up tonight um, so I'm really pleased to be able to share that with all of you if you have any questions about it, you can obviously just send me a message. Um, okay, so I think, um, let me just check if there are any questions. It's so tricky to, okay, so I see there's a lot of hellos and things going on, but no specific uh, questions. If any pop up, I will definitely, um, oh, I see, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't eat red meat. I'm 50% vegetarian. Woohoo, that's so good. <laughs> um, let me scroll down here. Uh, okay. Oh, guys, it's it's tricky for me to see all of this, but hello to you too. Um, and if I see any other questions that I don't get to answer now, I'll answer them privately. But remember, on the 30th of April, I will be at Mind Body Spirit teaching a workshop, and it's called Reuthing. So it's literally when you take away the stress and you remove the blocks and you take out the aches and pains and you get your system moving and you wake up, you literally feel 10 years younger. And people say they feel this way after one lesson because it's true. You feel like you're floating. So come and join me for that workshop. I would love to see you there. Okay, so I wanted to share a just a relaxation with you all tonight and I, I hope those four foundations um, are really going to make a big big impact on your life right so I'm gonna go over them again just quickly eat what you eat counts okay sleep make sure that you get into the biorhythms of this beautiful planet go to bed early wake up early mind you need to check in, okay? Every day, try to check in. Give yourself some mental space, even if it's 10 minutes, just sitting down, following your breath, connecting your mind and your body. And then your yoga. So it's actually exercise daily and whatever works for you. I know we don't all sing from the same hymn sheet and some people love to just get out there and cycle and some people love to run and I highly recommend you add yoga into that mix if you do because I'm sure your hamstrings and your hip flexors are very tight. But anyway, for me, I am really, um, I'm really passionate about what yoga can bring into your life. It is an opportunity for you to connect with you. That's why I teach it, that's why I share it. Um, and so, for all of you out there, I would like to just share this meditation with you. And I want you to begin by just allowing yourself to just get into a nice, comfortable place. You might be lying on a sofa, you might be sitting on a chair, so wherever you are, just allow yourself to just weight down. So feel the whole weight of your body just begin to relax. And just close your eyes. When we relax, we heal. The more we're able to relax, the more we heal. Relaxation is a practice. The more we practice relaxation, the better we become. And so just allow yourself in your own safe space to settle down into the most comfortable place that you can. And then gently let your eyelids close and feel all the muscles around your eyes, the web of muscles that go down onto the cheekbones, relax. And just allow the muscles around the mouth and the nose to relax. And just get this feeling of the whole face just beginning to relax. Feel that space where the jaw and the ear meet and just let it go. Just soften your whole jaw. And now, if you can, try to imagine your brain inside your skull relaxing. Just as though you're just turning off 
that train of endless thinking and just letting the whole mind and brain relax inside the skull. And then just allowing your throat, the seat of your communication, just allow your throat to relax. And now just moving down, allow your collarbones to broaden and relax. And just feel this beautiful feeling as your shoulders soften and drop down even more. And so from deep within the roots of the shoulders, allow them to relax. And then moving down through the upper arms, through the forearms, through the hands and all the fingers. And just allow them to relax. And then allowing your heart to soften. Get this feeling of just softening the heart. We spend so much time protecting ourselves from the world, from pain. We're scared. The beautiful front body just closes in. Just try to open it out like you're opening the gates of the heart and softening the heart. And just allowing this fearless, beautiful you just to shine. And then just allowing the whole body to soften. So feel into your whole torso and feel your organs just softening down and settling down into the most perfect place for optimum health and well-being. And then feeling deep into your hips, deep into the roots of the hip joints feeling that soften now and just allowing the bones of the thighs, the knees, the shins and the ankles to relax and allowing the ankle bones and all the bones of the feet to relax. And now from the soles of the feet through the ankles through the calves, through the knees and the thighs, through the hips, through the belly, through the back body, all the way up, through the throat, through the jaw, through the whole face and out the crown of the head and all around your auric body, just allowing your whole body to relax. And in this space, I want you to imagine yourself in a place where you feel so happy, where you feel so, so abundant, vital, healthy and happy. This place can be a place that you always go to when you imagine, if you visualize, or it can be real, or it can be completely new. So just imagine yourself in the most beautiful place. It could be near the ocean. It could be in a forest, high up in a log cabin. It could be in your favorite room. So wherever that is, just see yourself in this place now, so comfortable so happy. Notice the vibrant vitality. Notice the expression across your face. So happy. Notice the sparkle in your eye. And become aware now of what you see around you. Just become aware of the fabrics, the nature, wherever you are, see everything that you see around you. Notice what you're wearing in this picture. And now, become aware of what you can hear. Maybe you can hear the sound of birds. Maybe you can hear the ocean. 
the waves just softly lapping on the shore. So become aware of what you can hear. Maybe you can hear your favorite music or people you love talking in the background. And now become aware of any sense that you can smell lingering in the atmosphere. Maybe it's spring and you can smell the jasmine. Or you can smell the ocean, that sweet, salty smell. Or maybe you can smell the fresh cut grass, or pineapple, or coconuts. Become aware of what you can smell. And now become aware of what you can taste. What can you taste? Perhaps you've sipped on some beautiful drink and the taste is still swirling around your mouth. And so now see all that you can see around you. Hear all the sounds that you can hear. Taste what you can taste and smell the beautiful aromas that you can smell. And now just feel your whole body so, so relaxed in this beautiful world. You notice a chair over in the distance and I want you to walk over to that chair and lie down in that chair so relaxed so easy. You settle down in that chair and actually that chair reclines just a little bit more and so you ease your way back into that reclining position and your eyes close even more and you can feel as though this chair was actually made for your body. It is just wrapping around you so perfectly and in fact you have never been more comfortable in your whole life. And so your whole body melts deeper and deeper into this beautiful chair made for you. And while you're lying in this beautiful chair with your heart open and your whole body relaxed and soft and completely rejuvenating, because when we relax, we rejuvenate. Our body heals us. It heals the great trinity, it heals the mind, it heals the body, and it heals our spirits. And so while you're here, I'm going to read you a poem that I wrote for you. And it's a poem of courage. Sometimes we don't feel like we have very much to go out there and live our lives. And so this poem is written to inspire you. When you're tired and just don't feel inspired. Know your life has been filled with every moment that it was meant to. If in this moment you can do nothing else. Just lie where you are and watch your life like a movie. Imagine it was your last day on earth. Try to recall all the times you laughed. Laugh because it was so funny and laugh because it was so hard. Think of a time when you felt compassionate so deep, compassion so deep that you cried Think of a time that you saw a little child or a person and for no reason at all, your heart felt like it was going to burst open with love. Think of those sweet moments, the views, the big wild world, the ocean lapping on the shore, the smell of fresh cut grass, a sandy beach beneath your feet, a canopy of bowing trees. Think of the things you thought you were scared of, those times you felt the fear and did it anyway, and those times you didn't. Remember the time you hugged someone so tight, wishing you could get closer than close, and then they hugged you back. 
the fullness of the moon and the warmth of the sun, the morning light on your face, the most electric sunset, the time you couldn't sleep because you were so excited, and the times you were just worried, the movie that made you cry way past the credits, the shoes you loved way past their sell-by date, the taste of your favorite food when you were so hungry, a golden tan, your body charged with vitamin D, the smell of spring, the time you ate it all and the time you resisted. Now try to recall the first time you saw a picture of yourself as a baby. And actually, your heart just melted. Now step into that picture. Take that little person and hold them in your arms. Promise that you will take care of them, you, no matter what. That this is the new chapter in your book where you are the most important. Tell that beautiful child spirit bursting to wake up to everything that you are, that together you will do it. And from this day on, make a vow to never neglect or abandon your inner loving child again, but to be there to wipe away every tear and lovingly cheer every victory. Because from now on, you will carry you through the fire if you have to. Let the gratefulness cascade from your heart in every cell. Let it flow into all those around you. Everything you desire will happen. And in its most perfect way, you'll see. But what will matter most at the end of it all will be, did I love? Did I love with all my heart, all of my life? Did I dance enough? Did I laugh enough? Did I live enough and love my dreams, however they manifested? Was I brave enough to let me shine? Life is a kaleidoscope of experiences. Just fall in love with them again. And so wherever you are, just slowly begin to feel that love in your body. Let it trickle and wash through every single cell from your head down to your toes. Literally, let it sweep through and take out what you no longer need for the next chapter of your life so that you can take your life and live your dreams. Slowly waking up and in your own time. And I will leave you here with a big loving hug. <laughs> and to say, I can't wait to see you um, on the 30th of April at the Mind Body Spirit Festival, if you can make it. If you can't, that's okay, I'll catch you next time. And I send you so much love. And if you are at all interested in getting a copy of that poem that I wrote, please just email me and I will happily send it to you because I wrote it for you. Um, and if you would like, remember um, to get a copy of Total Body Yoga, um, MBS 2017, and that is for your 20% off my total body yoga. So I'm really happy to be sharing that all with you guys. And I send you so much love from London. Big kiss and namaste.